Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome to another Linux First Impressions. Today we will be looking at Bridge Linux. Bridge Linux is an Arch-based distribution from the USA. It's interesting because I'm so used to reviewing a lot of different distributions that are from all over the world and very few actually are from the United States of America. That being said, Bridge Linux is easy to install, was not too difficult, it did have a live media that I was able to put on my USB stick and it comes in four flavors, GNOME, KDE, LXDE and XFCE. This is the KDE version of this. The live DVD uh, loaded quite easily. No issues with that. There was a window right like you see here. There was the readme file and an install button. I was able to click on that and start the install. It was a text-based install and for the most part it ran very smoothly. Uh, there were a few issues to note that when it was installing the system it got so far into a hundred percent and I just kinda sat there I was kinda watching it letting things go and watching it letting things you know just kinda doing that and I noticed after a long while man it's been at a hundred percent for a long time and it hasn't moved I did get a little worried that maybe it had frozen up so eventually I clicked on it nothing happened I hit the enter key and it went on back into the main, main menu I don't know if that was a bug or what was going on. Everything seemed to, to load proper and I was able to continue with the installation process. The install reminded me a lot of how Slackware does their install where you choose one and set everything up and choose the next option and set everything up and it keeps bringing you back to the main menu and you could actually repeat steps until you get it right and keep moving on and then you move on to the next item list and so forth and so on until it's all done. I did like the fact that I was able to easily just ignore installing Grub and doing anything with a bootloader since I don't use the native bootloaders and I just go through my Gen 2 to create a simple generic guest OS bootloading option and that was a nice feature. Outside of that the live distribution did work fine and after I had it installed I was easily able to get right into Bridge Linux. What you see here on the desktop is what you normally will get. This is a default background. Uh, everything here, if I was to take out my ugly mug, you would see is all the way it is. You have your typical KDE taskbar down here with a few items loaded. Network worked immediately with no issues. However, I will get to a major problem that I ran into with networking after doing an update. The menu system, I believe it actually came with the advanced KDE menu. I went ahead and threw it into the classic because it makes it a lot easier just to kind of view things. I haven't installed too much. I did install Apper, which is a GUI to Pac-Man and I installed Simple Screen Recorder and of course the GUVC view. Now it's interesting, Simple Screen Recorder you can install from AUR so that makes it a little bit easier than just installing it from source although I've gone, gotten to be a pretty good installer of that from source from many different flavors of Linux. If we look at our menu system here you'll see that it came with QT4, it did have the GIMP and of course as I said LibreOffice and all of its interest um, packages it did come with Chromium as the browser and I don't believe any other browser in fact I don't even see my favorite file manager slash browser listed there so just Chromium and the multimedia it did come with the Dragon Player and I believe M Player installed via a dependency of something else that I had inst I had played with Amarok is on there. Of course, there's LibreOffice. Your Apper software and 
Java, system settings, etc. for settings, your typical KDE programs inside of system, and utilities pretty much duplicating what you pretty much saw in system. It's nothing fancy in regards to the applications, very minimal in fact. In fact, the ISO to download was less than a gig for this, so there's not very much that it has to offer right out of the box. But for the most part, anything that you want to install, you can easily do using Pac-Man or installing Apper, which is a software GUI management system, if you're not familiar with that. Apper, I have seen before in other flavors. It is very much easy to use, uh, simple to install. Now, I wanted to install the lib32 abilities, and to do that within this program, or within Bridge or Arch in general, for the most part, like I said, Bridge is Arch, so there's not very much in the Bridge area that isn't better than to go ahead and, uh, if we do, let's see here, let's just edit it, nano-w slash edc pacman dot conf to add more repositories or options we had to un uncomment the multi-lib these three lines and that gave us the ability then to have lib32 packages which I set up just in case I needed it with the simple screen recorder now when I did the update to bridge Linux I ran into some major networking issues it's kinda of difficult to fix a system when you're not familiar with it and the one thing that's gone down is your network settings network manager crashed after reboot after doing an update now this isn't the first time I've seen this with Arch but it's the first time I've seen it in a long time so I could not remember what I needed to do to fix it what I ended up doing and I'll pull up my notes here what I ended up doing was installing two new packages, KDE Plasma-Applets-Plasma-NM for Network Manager, and that had a dependency of libmm-qt. Those two packages needed to be installed, and then once I installed that, rebooted, Network Manager was working fine. Now, as I said, this isn't a bridge issue because I've seen this in other Arch flavors where I did an update and the network manager was dead. And what, I'm, what, what I figured out is that these two packages pretty much replace KDE Plasma-Applets-Network Management, which I believe is an older way of managing the system. After I got the network back up and running, though, I did look at the bridge forums to see if I could find anything that matched my topic, and I did find this URL here that if we go ahead and we see if I still have chromium up we go to chromium and we go to the forums here inside of update notices there is an option or, or problem down here about network manager broken per March updates now here's the thing this flavor is from June and it's five months old and they're talking about this being broken back in March so you'd think that it should have been fixed in June when this came out and they tell me it's completely different than what I did they're talking about this being a system D issue and that it's an issue with let me find the exact area here you have to have system D installed and working system D is now the default in its system and its scripts sys v in it and the various RC scripts are not supported anymore. Well, I'm not sure if by installing those other two packages that kind of circumvented it or fixed it, but either way, by getting these two packages here installed, which I ended up going back into my Gen 2 and looking for the packages, what I was seeing was when I was in KDE and I looked up at the network stuff, I was seeing network management libraries being broken. So I figured I needed to fix those libraries. When I looked for the network management libraries for KDE and Arch, I couldn't find them anymore in the updates. All closest I could find was the KDE Plasma uh, NM for network management. And so that's why I went ahead and went this direction and installed these two applications.
which like I said after I did that rebooted networks up and running again I'm good to go this is just a heads up because if you run into this problem it's best that well, when you do your update everything's still good until you reboot if you do an update like this and you notice that you you may have this problem because of updates to the network manager then you may want to go ahead and get these from a repository and just have them handy sitting around just in case you need to install them by hand afterwards just a just a word of wisdom there on that other than that if I look at my information of what I kind of put down about the system getting stuck the updates and network being broken that's really all I've run into as negatives to bridge Linux you know it's kind of nice to to review an arch based distribution I've looked at Debian a lot I've looked at Slackware a few Fedora based a lot of Gen 2 based because that's my main distribution it's nice to see an arch based because I hear a lot of good things coming from the arch community I think arch is next to Gen 2 that's the best thing you can get with having the most control over your system with arch I mean with arch you're not having to compile everything from source but you can still pick and choose every little bit of your system to build it to be as minimal or as robust as you'd like it to be arch in general is very good it has an excellent user community with lots of packages out there that you can get such as being able to get simple screen recorder in the AUR uh, that is another thing you can't just install AUR app, app, uh, applications you know from scratch or, or pull it from there is a GUI out there I haven't installed it just yet check it out but what I found was if you go to the ARU website you can download the TARS and I'll give you a, a quick look at that for instance in downloads here I've got simple screen recorder and the lib32 simple screen recorder here actually, I actually don't need that anymore so I can go ahead and delete it and what you have to do to be able to install those once you get them is you pretty much extract them to the directory as you see right here and then you go into that directory and we'll say for instance simple screen recorder and then you do a make package and then you type in the name of the package that you want to update yeah like that and actually you don't even need to do that I'm sorry you just go into that directory you type in make package hit enter and it's gonna set everything up now if you want it to go ahead and install any dependencies that you might need which is really handy you use that make package with a dash s and it will pull in all the dependencies and install them for you when it's all done it creates the simple screen recorder tar.xz and then you're able to easily use pacman to install it and it pretty much prepares everything you need now in a way I'm kind of disappointed in that that you have to do so many manual things to make an AUR package run but I'm sure there are better easier ways to do it and maybe I guess saying on the AUR site there are some other packages you can install that give you a GUI interface to it that also build and install and pretty much automate a lot of these steps it's just I was kind of surprised that they haven't made it built in naturally with Arch to just do it automatically without having to pull in extra things to do that. But not to bash them on that, I still feel it's an excellent resource. It's a great way to be able to get community created projects into a distribution. And I'm just glad it's there save me a lot of headache trying to learn a new distribution to get simple screen recorder for instance to work now as I said a couple times I'm gonna be out and about uh, this week camping away so I'm recording this a few days early I'll probably upload it to YouTube before I head out tomorrow to, to, to get out into the mountains I'm hoping what I can do is get it uploaded but leave it private I'll set it up though that 
it uh, if I can get some network connectivity I'll do everything I can to get into YouTube through my phone or tablet up there at the mountains and see if I can just at least make it public so it turns on otherwise worst comes to worst I may have to come into town long enough to make sure that you get your distribution because as I've said many times I'm trying to do 52 distributions 52 weeks there's no excuses well maybe if I end up getting super sick someday and end up in bed but you'll probably end up getting one going <coughs> alright I'm not in my armchair I'm in bed really sick and here it is <laughs> but hey we're over the halfway mark I think this is episode 29 or 30 so I'm doing, doing really good I only need, I have about 22 more to, to make that uh, that personal goal so as I always say if it's morning, evening, noon or night whatever you're having enjoy it have a great weekend. If you're watching this from the U.S., hope you had a great Thanksgiving and a good holiday. Enjoy your family. We have so much to be thankful for. Everybody around the world has things to be thankful for. It's not just an American thing. But thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for your comments. Please let me know if there are distributions you'd like me to look at. This one was asked by one of my subscribers and a friend of mine that uh, said he really liked Bridge Linux and was really liking the Arch distributions. I have been trying to find some more Arch distributions, so if you guys have some different ones out there that you know of, it's I know at one time I looked at DistroWatch and was having a hard time finding them, so let me know. I'll take a look at them and do a quick review. Thank you very much again, and we'll talk to you all later. Bye. And now I have to figure out where my simple screen is. It's the very last one. There we go. <laughs> See y'all.